All right, ELD with a Masters 25 draft, one of the few times that Brainstorm is legal in draft here, so happy to cover it. And Masters 25 has a ton of classics throughout the history of the game. And considering the first pick here, leaning toward Pendlehaven. And got some Megamorph as well. Some other fatties. And it looks like Pendlehaven is taken. It does seem like the type of format where you want to go aggro. A lot of people are going to be trying to do some really cool stuff. And... Sometimes it's just better to go face. So Pendlehaven and a 1-1 one, one to pair with it. Uh, that is the guy that when he takes damage, you get that many insects. So Pendlehaven really going to combo well with him. And we'll see about other 1-1s one, as well. 1-1's one, not usually the best place to be in draft. Uh, but there are some pretty reasonable cards here. Running at double speed here on Brainstorm MTG segment we're calling fast effect and this figure could be a reason to go into black green but it looks like gonna keep green x open uh, that 4-3 is going to allow us to pump in the late game for eight mana plus five plus five in Trample is certainly something. And a Chroma's Vengeance could be good in a mid-range green-white strategy. We'll see where this goes. Realizing now as I begin the coverage, I don't know the names of many of these cards. <laughs> so this could be tough. Uh, looks like Arbor Elf. Or branching into red for Chandra's Outrage and Arbor Elf is the pick. Combos with Pendlehaven gives some mana acceleration. Uh, being able to jam on turn three, some of your four drops can be pretty brutal. Uh, and then continuing on white, the Sai of the Shinobi, the likely pick here. That is going to pump all of our guys. Now that Pendlehaven pick may seem rather unusual. Uh, and I'm not going to lie, I took it because I thought it was still worth a bunch of money. And it is not. The Masters reprints have really hurt the secondary market values quite a bit. Uh, Boros Charm would be a consideration just for value. And taking Spike Shot Goblin. Uh, so looking at possible green, red, white. Maybe skew back toward green, red. Giant Growth or Untapping Plus Pump. Now we're getting down toward the largely meaningless picks. Haven't been drafting very much. Used to draft every single week, uh, at least once on Friday nights. Of course, uh, early on in the game, I used to draft constantly. That's actually how I got into vending in the first place. Uh, we used to do winner-take-all drafts at a little shop. In Fairhaven, Massachusetts, it was called Looney Tunes. Uh, shout out to the owner, Steve Sprouse. I believe he is still playing Magic. I uh, heard that he might have been opening a store, uh, which would be cool. If that's the case, hopefully I'll get to see it someday. Second pack, first pick here. Uh, Presence of Gond. Going to generate 1-1 one, one tokens. Again, that's pretty spicy with that Pendlehaven. And plus one, plus one to all my guys. Uh, that's telling right there. The uh, Illidmari's Call Green White Rare. Not actually going to be worth taking, even going Green White. I did consider it because the card was worth double digits before the set, but at this point I realized uh, that probably not worth looking at rare drafting. Uh, there were six packs on the line here. We've got a 3-3 three, three that makes a 1-1 one, one when it enters, and we also have the sorcery that lets you fight and pump. And we're taking an angel token creator. Maybe grab some flickers later. That could be useful. 
uh, probably a weak pick in retrospect. I would say definitely a weak pick, certainly with where I ended up going with the draft. I, I really felt like in this draft, whoever went black-red had the pick of all of the best cards at the table. Uh, that early spike shot goblin uh, was a late, sorry, I should say late spike shot goblin was a bit of a shock. And there's the chupacabra. That card is just bonkers. Talk about flickering something in and out. I mean, that, that card would, I mean, it does work on its own, but you get tricky with that thing, start recurring it. Destroy target creature is a hell of an effect in a format entirely dictated by board presence. Uh, Core Firewalker could be good enough to main deck. Usually not, uh, in my view, unless you're actually running uh, the red cards to go alongside it. Uh, pretty nice when your lightning bolts start gaining you life, as well as your uh, creatures that you're committing to the board. And we got skeletonized. Look at this. All sorts of good red and black cards still in the packs. Look like an act of, act of treason. A uh, skeletonize. Uh, and then an ash baron here. I'll go ahead and take that for mana fixing. Right now it's still not clear if it's going to be two or three color. Trying something new this week with the double speed footage. Know what you think in the comments. Pyroclasm coming around so late. That card is so powerful. Uh, and Presence of Gond. Well, fairly reasonable. The fact that it has to stick on a creature uh, is a little underwhelming. Getting two for one and limited always sucks. Getting two for one to any time kind of is not where you want to be. Uh, one thing from when I used to draft a lot uh, compared to now is I noticed at the end of drafts, I'll typically have probably 10 cards or so that I'm going to want to cut. Um, you know, that's very, very different than when you're able to plan out your curve and really fill up on your two, two and three slot in particular. Um, you know, you, you don't want too much of a clump there. You need some high-end cards. And uh, what that will allow you to do is start taking sideboard cards, uh, things that are narrow, like that plummet, for example. Uh, could definitely be a, a solid sideboard card. Having, you know, perhaps two or three plummets could happen uh, if you're actually planning out your picks uh, to the point where you're able to pass on playable cards at two and three just because you know that you're filled up there um, but as it is i'm nowhere near that point certainly not in this draft format uh, nettle sentinel there taken uh, largely just because it'd be worth a buck or two hopefully um, that white flyer probably would be better in the deck and i think pack three here is where the deck started coming along a little bit better uh, decree of justice i think that's a solid late game card uh, Rescue Cat is definitely an option. Uh, but Watch Wolf, probably one of the best cards for this type of archetype possible. Just two mana for a 3 3. That's going to dwarf. I mean, even your opponent's three drops, that's very likely going to dwarf. Uh, Factory could be a very, very good pick. Uh, we also have some solid pump spells here. And it looked like another Watch Wolf there. Uh, yeah, wow. Yeah, downshifted rares are definitely where you want to be here. 5-5. Uh, five, five. They get to put a legendary creature into the battlefield. Take my chances. You can definitely get blown out. There's some spicy legendaries. Uh, you're probably not going to get blown out by Nicol Bolas at least. They'd have to pay the upkeep. But yeah, Chroma. Uh, you can let me know in the comments what you think the, the funniest blowout would be there in terms of what they could put in off of, I believe it's Eomari. And getting toward the end of pack three here. Another Presence of Gond as an option. 
Uh, this Order of Heliod is a very, very solid card here. Uh, one of the few times that I'm pretty comfortable... Oh, Fiend Hunter late. That's an excellent addition. That's really what the deck wants. This deck would love to have a couple of swords to plowshares or similar effects. The ability to get those creatures out of there. That Kavu Predator, not the best. Going to grab a couple of removal spells uh, with these late picks. Uh, it, three and a white and your opponent gaining four life. Not the most exciting removal. Looks like Disenchant for the sideboard. That'll round it out there. Uh, so overall, pretty happy with the deck. I would have definitely liked to have seen, you know, Ranker would have been an excellent addition to a deck like this. Uh, very unlikely to be able to play a Chroma's, uh, a Chroma's Vengeance at this point, uh, given just how aggro the deck turned out. Uh, it's not very mid-rangey at all. Got the two Watch Wolves, uh, you know, Pendlehaven with a bunch of uh, ability to create 1-1 one, one tokens. This deck's going to want to commit to the board, go face, and win before... Uh, your opponent is able to do all of the really cool things that are possible in this format. And here I'm just laying out, uh, as most people do, uh, just by mana costs here. Uh, Nettle Sentinel, not really worth playing. Uh, two Watch Wolves, even, even in a mono green deck uh, like Elves, there are times, like Legacy Elves, there are times where Nettle Sentinel just doesn't untap. Uh, so not really looking to get into that type of game. Uh, Echoing Courage, definitely an interesting card. We've got some duplicates. Uh, the plus two, plus two is strong, and whenever it gets it doubled up or, or more, I mean, the card is tremendous value. Um, Echoing Courage plus Decree of Justice does give potential for a really difficult to beat come from behind. Um, and it looks like just going through and picking the cards uh, that I'm going to be the most happy with. Knight of the Skyward Eye. Uh, I'll, I'm not going to lie, I really thought that had flying or at least reach once you made it bigger. Uh, it's a terrible name for a card. <laughs> Skyward Eye definitely implies at least like flying or reach. I mean, I guess reach is, is pretty pretty flavorful, but yeah, that's, that's kind of like having a picture of a creature flying on a card and have it not have flying. Um, at this point, kind of assessing whether or not it could conceivably be possible to splash for some of those powerful sideboard cards, there's, there's really no way you're going to want to do that with the Chupacabra at double black. Uh, and not really with Spike Shot either. It looks like we're going to just be a solid green-white deck. A little bit of uh, craziness in the late game with Decree of Justice possible. And yeah, just would have liked to have seen some more in terms of uncommons. Uh, but it is what it is. You know, it's a... Uh, Draft is a hugely limited format. The Elvish Aberration there, going to cycle for forests or just be a really big body. And going to be pretty happy to get the extra three mana off of him if we do go to the late game uh, with a card like the Cree of Justice in the deck, either just jamming for angels or cycling and then you know echoing courage uh, to pump the whole team uh, or just kind of ambush. And you know Pendlehaven makes every one of those 1-1s. One a uh, two, three, uh, one at a time, of course, but uh, during combat, that does really complicate things. So overall, pretty happy with this. We'll see how it goes in round number one.